Tesla has a lot of technologies converging at once that can radically change the future. One cool thing is cool, but if you get 10 that intersect, it can change the world. I'm joined today by John Twig. In part two of this series, where we are discussing some of the ways all of these pieces start fitting together in ways that will absolutely change the world. Um, and we think for the better, maybe you guys will agree, but we'll find out. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Thank you, Brian, to be back. Great to be here again. Yeah, it's so much fun. You guys, when he was on in the past, you said, he's too smart. You have to bring him back. And I was like, well, that's unfortunate for John, but we'll bring him back. Poor guy. Yeah, I wouldn't call it smart. I'd call it a little bit crazy. Interested in all these different things and yeah, make, making chaos out of it all. Well, and you're clever, and clever is what brings the pieces together. I know a lot of smart people who, who are academically smart, but don't know how to necessarily connect things. And this is why you're here, is because this, this post was a great example of looking at it. We can look at the direct implications of the latest news. Uh, let's do that quickly, but keep reading after this for an example of how things come together faster and with bigger implications than most people have been considered. Many hands make light work. Sunning news that optimists will have the 22 degrees of freedom. Yes, all this, the more degrees of freedom, the more complexity that goes into it. And that's something that the neural nets can manage. So if I've got a bot and I need to train it, who am I going to hire that out to? Because mm, these bot companies may know robotics. They may know, some of them know manufacturing. Some of them really don't. A lot of them really don't. But how many of them have the ability to actually train a bot? How many have the finances, the resources, the software skills, the coding ability, the, the compute time to train a bot? Now, I can imagine NVIDIA did a presentation, didn't they, where they got all the different bots. They're effectively producing almost a bot operating system. Yes. That really helps a lot of those companies. But how do they bring the training back from all those different customers into that operating system? That's a little bit like comparing Apple to Android, where all the different Android manufacturers put their own little tweaks on, they go out of step, you can't update them in the same way. Tesla, control of all of it from a central control, can partner with lots of different companies to get those building blocks right. And I think the really big difference is Tesla really are aiming for, got to be careful when we say the words of general intelligence, because we're not talking consciousness and those kind of things, we've got to split those up. But in terms of building the building blocks for all the different things you might want to do. So when it's trained to the level, it can hold a plate with its three fingers and hook a cup with a little finger, and it can do all the different things and fold in the clothes up, you get into the point where you can then it almost language, large language model, tokenize what you're trying to do because you've got the building blocks to do all those different elements of the task. So we will see that in other bots to some extent, but there's always a chance Tesla are going to have the better training. Dojo presumably going to give them accelerating amounts of training capacity so they can train faster. Obviously, we talked the dexterity of your hands, which is going to take even more power. So it's, it's a fascinating time that Tesla is going to have an advantage in terms of training, dexterity of the hands, probably the weight and the uh, capacity of the battery and all the normal actuators uh, being more efficient because we've seen software where they actually model the electric field flow of all the different things. So they get in as much capacity in the same way they do with the uh, casting. They get the different uh, materials to the best physics they possibly can. So it's quite possible that a Tesla bot is going to be significantly cheaper than most of the others and more capable. So it's a little bit like the semi we were talking about last time the Tesla semi being the only sensible choice if you can get hold of one because it's better and cheaper. So when you come to, so I, I own a bot company, we're going to train our bot. Now we're going to have to pay through the nose for that because we don't have that capacity in-house. Um, but even if we did, we'd still be paying a, a large chunk of money, but farming it out to NVIDIA, fine. But I've got something weird about my bot. Maybe maybe mine's on wheels instead of feet. Maybe mine has extra arms. I, I think Tesla would be uniquely positioned to prioritize that training that makes the most sense to them in ways that other companies relying on NVIDIA to do that training might struggle. Does that seem reasonable? About a year ago, when we first started 
hearing about Optimus, I imagined, I actually put a post out and everybody probably thought I was crazy, but you imagine the giant play areas where children play yes. and you're climbing up the slides and doing, I can imagine, perhaps that's not quite how it would work, but I can imagine Tesla building great big warehouses of various different training scenarios, uh, so many different possibilities and working with all the partners to build a bot that really is got, getting approaching close to what a human can do in terms of climbing, walking, maybe not running, they deliberately don't want to, them to be scary. Uh, but in terms of climbing, construction sites, they're going to have to climb, they're going to have to do different things. So absolutely, I can imagine a giant warehouse with all sorts of scenarios, artificial houses, uh, climbing sites, construction site, all sorts of things on a really grand scale. And who, who else can build all those kind of things? That's a big commitment. Uh, yes. Well, when it comes down to manufacturing, if you want this convergence, you need to have you need to have the manufacturing, you need to have the AI, you need to have the ability to gather the data. You need to have a lot of things that most companies don't have, certainly in-house. When we saw bot demo one or two, AI day one or two, they showed how they were using crash testing software to model the bot falling over. Mm. Mostly when you build a bot, I imagine you just over-engineer the heck out of it, which for a demo is great, except that you add some weight, you lose some mobility, some range of motion. But when it comes to mass production, any, anyone can build a bridge that doesn't fall down. You need an engineer to build a bridge that just barely doesn't fall down. And that's what manufacturing yes. at scale is. Uh, here you now, Yes. That, that that's really fascinating in terms of the scale we, we were you, you were saying a, a few minutes ago that other robots might cost a huge amount of money they're only going to be bought by specialist manufacturing companies that can make the best of that tesla can strategically in the same way as they did with fsd make it available to lots of people as well as putting them in robots if tesla ended up with a million of these relatively quickly what's to stop them putting in Let's say all of the staff can have one for training, take it home, live with people, with the family. So they're not just learning the movement and watching how humans interact. They're listening to the conversations. They're being part of the conversation. They're actually moving into the human world and they're actually becoming part of our world in a way that our phones that we just stare at and they don't know what's going on in the world. So, suddenly they're actually becoming almost people like uh, could they actually become friends with people? Well, maybe they wouldn't think so, but would they be a company for people? Fascinating questions. I mean, one of the industries that is, I don't know, I presume in the US the same, but in England, it is horrible, the care industry. There isn't enough money. Uh, if we knew what was going on behind closed doors of people struggling in pain, all sorts of things, and they're getting maybe a, an hour's help a day, the bot could live with them. That would transform their life and not only live with them, enable them to get the robo taxi, help them with the chair, all sorts of things, and actually not just make their life in their home better, but bring their life back into the real world in a way that's just not possible practically at the moment. So many possibilities. And if there is a looming crunch in healthcare, which there is, mm -hmm. allowing people the freedom to stay in their homes longer uh, alleviates some of that and improves quality of life. Um, my grandma didn't want to go to the, to the old folks home. She fought it for as long as she could because the way, I mean, that's once you get there, resources are limited. And also a lot of the people work there. They're not necessarily got the best qualifications. I was actually talking to somebody that spent a lot of time in the UK speaking to care homes, working with them, writing software for them. And they say they have a real issue with staff. Half of the staff are there because they love the work and they want to do it. And they, they really care about the people. The other half of the staff are just there for the money. Mm -hmm. And when you've got old people that if you're not actively taking the emotional interest, caring about them, that makes for a really horrible place to live. And the really fascinating thing that was happening in practice was the people that care would come together and do the day shift. And the ones that didn't, perhaps would escape into a night shift. So you would end up with a shift with nobody that cared. That's yeah. a scary proposition if your parents are going into those places. On a more hopeful note, 
Um, would you like to learn Spanish? Would you like to learn Klingon? Would you like to uh, do puzzles together? These are all things that your caregiver may not be able to provide you, but your Optimus absolutely can. Would you like to have a conversation in the language that you spoke growing up as a teenager? We can do that. Um, but we're getting a little into the weeds and we've got a lot yeah. of weeds to get through. Uh, yeah. It's hard to imagine any physical jobs that they will not be able to do, but it takes time to scale bot production. So the first jobs to be done will be the most skilled, most unpleasant, and most dangerous. In other words, bots will first replace the higher paid manual jobs where the economics work best and will take some years to expand it to cover everything on on that front, I would say yes. Let's let's put them. Uh, let's replace deep sea divers. Let's uh, replace uh, the anything you saw on the show. Dangerous jobs. Uh, those are ones that I would like to see. Hum let's get them out of the mines. Uh, have the bots building the boring tunnels. The boring tunnels are already already have very few people in them. But if there's one or two left, get them out. Um, yeah. Not only and of course construction on the roof. Uh, lots of people oh. pull off roofs, even window cleaners. I mean, they they try to do regulations. The guys that go up in those really scary things, cleaning the windows. It's like yeah. that's an obvious thing to replace because if the bot falls, well, you, you can get another. One. I mean, not to go off too much of a distance, but wars, of course, fighting. It's an obvious question that obviously people are dying in wars. Elon says he doesn't want. Optimus and his technology to be there for wars, but a big part of having a powerful military is not having wars because people don't want to have a war with you. So, if Optimus and various technologies made Western militaries far more powerful, we, that might actually stop all the wars. Right. And and it would be an interesting study to see how it creeps because if if your company says we're not going to allow them to be used in war. Other companies will, and maybe because uh, what I would say is, well, we won't allow them in combat, only support roles. Well, now the only things that can't die are the ones not in harm's way. What are we doing? The whole thing gets very, very silly very quickly. Uh, another obstacle I'd seen, somebody was saying some absolute, absolute clown who has uh, quite a following was saying there's no way Tesla will get to commercial bots in even five to 10 years. If it's less than five, if, and, I, and I'm, what Dr. Scott Walter told me last week is, okay, take Tesla out of the equation. There are companies building factories to start production of bots right now. So that- Yeah, I think, yeah, people don't understand the exponential nature of what's happening. Right. We're not just talking exponential in, in one area, we're talking multiple areas. Uh, Elon has said recently that the, the amount of training compute for AI is going up by an order of magnitude in something ridiculous like six months. <laughs> FSD 12 is already shocking people, and now we're getting used to it. But add another year of improvement on that with 10 times as much training. It's hard to imagine that it won't be driving everywhere. And then that same FSD or full self doing, as I call it, because in a bot, it's not driving, is, is going to be incredibly powerful and it's hard to see that they won't be doing almost all jobs all even domestic work doing the ironing all those kind of things within two years or so so i think the major issue will be scaling them uh, actually pre physically producing them because everybody will want one mm -hmm. as we've seen is it one of the kardashians with a cyber truck all over the place mm -hmm. when they've got one of the bots doing all the housework yes. everybody will want one well, and think of it just as a marketing tool. If there's an Optimus bot uh, employed in the sales center, whose job it is to spend all day wiping off fingerprints and uh, offering you a cup of water if you'd like one. Do you like water? I'll go grab you one. And then they grab the broom and you just sit there and watch them and go, oh, okay, I get it. It's hands-on. It's doing something. And it's doing the job no one wants. Do you really want to buff cars all day? I mean, I guess it's something to pass the time, but I feel like, Human labor is worth more than the simplest job in the world. And if that's what it would take, if you think the Cybertruck brought people into showrooms, just wait until you can introduce yourself to Optimus. Uh, it's going to be yeah. a wild, wild world in that regard. And again, if you just take Tesla out of the equation, this is already happening with or without them. And well, then why is it going to take Tesla so long? 
my first answer is who said it is, who said it's going to take them long. And second, just like the semi, they don't want a minimum viable product that they can just push out the door. Just like Cybertruck. If they wanted to make just a truck, they could have had it out three, four years ago. If the semi was good enough at, you know, they want it to work for the most people at the best price in the most with the highest margin. Because if there's no margin, there's no business. So, uh, John, we've got to go into part three. We're going to wrap this series up on our next installment where we will be talking about how all of this impacts Walmart. Um, Walmart. For those for those who've never heard of Walmart, what? What are you saying? Did you? Uh, congratulations on waking up from your 80-year coma. I was just going to say, even here in the UK, Walmart bought Asda, one of our biggest shopping oh. chains. Uh, I think they've sold them again now, but we most people have even heard of them over here. Yeah. So what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? Leave it in them comments below and uh, like, subscribe, do the usual and stay tuned, stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots in the thrilling conclusion of our three part series on how Tesla is absolutely poised to dominate in ways that no one else seems to.